Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Green St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. On the 4th of July, 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, I experimentally discovered a new supercomputer that could solve 65,536 problems at once or that could process information in parallel. Before that invention of the 4th of July 1989, parallel processing was dismissed as science fiction by the authors of textbooks on supercomputing. Before that invention, solving many problems at once was ridiculed as a beautiful theory that lacked an experimental confirmation. On the 4th of July, 1989, the technology of the parallel processing supercomputer became a tested reality. Before the 4th of July, 1989, the massively parallel processing supercomputer was like an elephant with a super body and the brain of an ant. The massively parallel processing supercomputer was a transformative technology that moved detailed data modeling from dream to reality. The massively parallel processing supercomputer is the technology that enabled precision petroleum reservoir simulation of the Niger Delta oil fields of the southeastern region of my country of birth, Nigeria. The invention of the massively parallel processing supercomputer opened the door for air-cooled supercomputers with no requirement for liquid cooling. I'm Philip Emaragwale. I made major headlines in major U.S. newspapers for discovering the massively parallel processing supercomputer such as the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal. I am a supercomputer scientist who began programming supercomputers exactly 16 years earlier on June 20, 1974 in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. The supercomputer is the world's fastest computer. The supercomputer is a living machine that grows with each increase in speed. At 8.15 on the morning of the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I experimentally discovered the fastest supercomputer. I invented a new supercomputer that computes across a new internet that is a new global network of 65,000 536 tightly coupled processors. I mathematically and experimentally invented how to tackle 65,536 challenging initial boundary value problems arising in mathematics and physics. I invented how to solve those grand challenge problems and how to solve them in a one-to-one -one corresponded manner. 
I invented how to use emails to and from 16-bit long addresses, each with no at sign or dot com suffix, and how to use those emails to stitch those 65,536 problems together. I invented how to stitch problems together as the original grand challenge problem. To reach that new frontier of human knowledge demanded new techniques and technologies such as a new arithmetic, a new algebra, a new calculus, a new computer, and most importantly, a new internet. The massively parallel processing supercomputer was not invented by the team of 25,000 vector processing supercomputer scientists of the 1980s. I conducted the parallel processing experiment that led to the discovery on the 4th of July 1989 of the massively parallel processing supercomputer. I, Philip M. Aguale, was the only person that invented how to harness the total supercomputer power of 65,536 separate processors. After my invention, the fastest 1,000 supercomputers in the world are supercomputing across thousands or millions of commodity of the shelf processors. That shift from one processor to one million processors is the biggest paradigm shift in the history of the computer. Since 1989, school children were asked to write a school report on the contributions of Philip Emma Aguale to the development of the modern supercomputer. Back in 1989, it made the news headlines that a lone wolf African supercomputer wizard in the United States had invented how to solve the toughest problems arising in modern calculus and computational physics and mathematically invented how to solve 65,536 initial boundary value problems of modern mathematics and invented how to solve them at once. That invention occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, and is called the Massively Parallel Processing Supercomputer. I, Philip Emma Aguale, was that African supercomputer scientist that was in the news back in 1989. I was in the news because I experimentally discovered that the fastest computing speeds in modern supercomputing must always be recorded with parallel processing technology rather than with vector processing technology. For the 15 years onward of June 20, 1974, I conducted my supercomputer research alone. I did so alone because I was ridiculed, mocked, and rejected by all white research teams that we are exclusively programming only sequential and vector processing supercomputers. As a black African-born supercomputer scientist in the United States, I felt like I was in exile wherever I am. I'm in exile in the United States. I was in exile in Africa. I was in exile 
in the then uncharted territory of the massively parallel processing supercomputer. A multidisciplinary supercomputer research team could comprise of 1,000 scientists and, ing and engineers. Each member, each member of that supercomputer research team was at the frontier of knowledge of physics or at the frontier of knowledge of mathematics or at the frontier of knowledge of computer science to discover parallel processing required both theory and experiments and required a polymath rather than a mathematician to invent the massively parallel processing supercomputer required a polymath that was simultaneously at home at the frontiers of physics, mathematics, and computer science. It took me 16 years of advanced training on word of March 25, 1974 in Oregon, United States as well as weekly attendances at 500 research seminars of the 1980s in the District of Columbia and Maryland, United States. To become that tribal threat and that polymath that is at home at the frontiers of knowledge in physics, mathematics, and computer science. Most importantly, I was the only research scientist that gave massively parallel processing research lectures to audiences of research computational physicists at the United States National Laboratories. I gave research lectures to research mathematicians at the International Congress of Mathematicians. I gave research lectures to research computer scientists of the two premier computer societies in the world, namely the Computer Society of the IEEE and the Association for Computing Machinery. In the late 1970s and early 80s, I was rejected because white research scientists dismissed me before they had me give my research lectures on how I invented the massively parallel processing supercomputer. The audio and video record recordings of my lectures on the new supercomputer that I invented are posted at emmaagwale.com. To work cohesively as a supercomputer research team demands that each team member follow the team leader. The supercomputer research teams of the 1970s and 80s were coerced to group think and we are technologically brainwashed to group think only in the direction of conventional and vector processing supercomputing. The leading proponents of vector processing supercomputers we are the leading opponents of parallel processing supercomputers. In 1989, there were 25,000 users of vector processing supercomputers. I was the only full-time programmer of the handful of massively parallel processing supercomputers of the 1980s. Gene Amdahl and Seymour Cray, the two leading opponents of the parallel processing supercomputer, argued that it will forever remain impossible to parallel process through as many as eight processors or computer cores. In the 1940s, 
through 60s. The group thinkers in the field of supercomputing focused only on the sequential processing supercomputer technology. In the 1970s and 80s, the group thinkers in supercomputing focused only on the vector processing supercomputer technology. In those two decades, I was forced to work as a lone wolf supercomputer scientist that was not a member of a 400-person research team. For that reason, I wasn't indoctrinated into group thinking that vector processing must always be superior to parallel processing. Like other black African scientists of the 1970s United States, I wasn't accepted into any supercomputer research group. That rejection forced me to forge a different path to the modern parallel processing supercomputer. That rejection forced me to think individually on how to harness the power of the massively parallel processing supercomputer and how to invent the technology and know it for the first time as the engine that drives the modern parallel processing supercomputer. The reason my invention of the massively parallel processing supercomputer made the news headlines and was recorded in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal was that the parallel processing supercomputer technology of today was then dismissed and abandoned by the leaders of thought in supercomputing, namely Gene Amdahl and Seymour Cray, and was then rejected by their followers who described parallel processing as a huge waste of everybody's time. Insightful and brilliant lecture.